One of the coolest places to be on a hot day in Fitzrovia, um, literally and figuratively, is the Pollock's Toy Museum. It's really, I think it has to be my favourite place in our wonderful uh, Fitzrovia. And I'm really happy um, that I'm here with Jack, whose great-grandmother started, great yeah. started um, Pollock's Toy Museum. And we're doing a little series on the wonderful people that make Fitzrovia the rare and extraordinary place that it is. And I have known Jack for a while um, as the proprietor of the Toy Museum, but I didn't know that in the basement where we are now is where Jack works as an artist and the incredible etchings he is producing. I mean, it is like being a bear in a lair here. <laughs> it really is, Jack. Um, it's just, it's just extraordinary. I mean, this is, this is etchings. Um, what made you do the bear in the lair? Uh, I think I enjoy getting lost in the kind of furry details and uh, I'd always, yeah, I wanted to kind of really, in lockdown I did that bear and I was just trying to focus my mind on other things and so it's nice to, oh, to... And look at him, he's talking to his friend, the fro frog. Yeah. They're, they're is just, this a fable or...? or? Just made up, uh, this is a self-portrait, I love watermelons, but then just, yeah, little... Oh, so he's eating a watermelon and he's sharing with the frog. Yeah, and then the little ants are walking away with some crumbs as well. Oh, <laughs> oh Jack, they're exquisite. And it's almost like Dura, you know, you always yeah. think of, of etchings Dura and you, yeah. your cipher is almost yeah. like Dura. I copied Dura with his cipher. And then you also did. this rhino is a homage to Dura's oh, rhino. Of course, oh, this is amazing. So, yeah. I was quite fascinated because also, I think you're asking why making artwork down here. I mean, I'd love to be hanging out with bears, but I can't. <laughs> I live in central London, which I love. Also, I can, with my imagination, my artwork, I can explore that itch and hang out with the animals that I'm drawing. Well, that, it's just so lovely because I think, I mean, John Berger did that amazing thing. Um, looking at animals and how we don't look at animals enough yeah. and then this tree um you were saying this sev oldest tree in scotland 700 years old yeah but do, are you scottish is there any scottish yeah, so pollock is a scottish name pollock is a scottish name but the pollock from here isn't actually the, the scottish one he's he was polish i think uh a polish pollock yeah pollock. Oh, like a pollock yeah. yeah 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 but no but we i was born in scotland but moved to london when i was four so but i go up a lot and yeah, that is from a tree that's near my grandma's house. So. Oh my God, your grandma, what a woman. Well, we'll talk yeah. about her in a minute. But um, oh Jack, and this amazing, I love, I love the sense you have of kind of historical painting too, that you're yeah. referencing it yeah. and, and, and so paying homage to it. Renaissance hounds here. <laughs> yeah. This one's meant to be, it's called The Queen is Dead and it's an imagined version of the Queen's funeral. So we've got her pyre here of hay that's on fire and she's being dragged along by her colonial giraffes and everyone's running alongside her in a kind of celebratory or kind of fanfare of the royal family, so. <laughs> yeah. You might not get that instantly, but that's what no, inspired me no, to. No, 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 that really wouldn't come instantly. There's like narratives that. that underpin a lot of them. Yeah, and then these are your etching plates. Yeah. And then Jack, you were saying down here that um, you also print the theatre. Um, yeah. That's kind of, and then this is kind of your little bear in the lair <laughs> section. But what do you actually do with the theatre pieces? So um, I've never really, I'm astonished that here in the middle of central London, there is such an incredibly cool uh, printing studio. Yeah, so these are the original plates that belong to Mr. Pollock, and he inherited them from his father-in-law. So they're from 1850. I've got this one here is actually, this is the copper plate that is nearly 200 years old. Wow. And this has made this print here, which I printed a few days ago on this press. So wow. we're kind of bringing the collection, which is, back alive really by reprinting it and then from these paper two-dimensional prints we mm. then can fold them up and construct them and then they pop out and become three-dimensional theatres. Oh my god Jack did you do this one it's got bears? Yeah, I did that one. <laughs> oh my god what is it with you and bears? That is so, you know I love bears and you know what the earliest ever example there's a cave in France where there is 
footprints of a man and a bear wow. dancing together. <laughs> and they were our first friends because in the, when we were kind of cave dwellers, yeah. they shared our caves with us. Really? And that's why I believe we have teddy bears because it's an atavistic wow. longing back to our cave dwelling lives. Is dancing a euphemism for being eaten? No, no, it's not, Jack. It's not. That is the amazing thing. That bear. No, we really danced with bears. Wow. They were like we. They okay. were our friends. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Take, me, take me back. Sounds oh my good. god, this is so great, this one! So that is a homage, that's actually a toy theatre inspired by the museum itself, so that's oh, our I side door. Oh, I love that! And oh my that's gosh! that's my dad's dog, and then these are bears that are in the collection, and this is... Oh! Yeah, that's the window Jack, that's got the robots in wonderful. it, that you're peering in. And... Yeah, the window with the robots. Oh, this is amazing! So... Oh, this is so great! This is your <laughs> mascot. Yeah. It's just beautiful, it's incredible. And then we have the collection of toy theatre plates that are all in those boxes there, and they're all the ones that date back to Mr. Reddington's day. So, so yeah, it's a huge archive that we're kind of keeping, trying to keep alive yeah. and printing from it's, them. It's just incredible that you, a young, cool, contemporary artist, are, it's just very rare, I think, Jack, that somebody, that young, artists are so respectful of the past and of history and I think that is of enormous benefit to them actually because you can only learn by knowing about and respecting the past yeah. and I think it's just really wonderful what you do and I think it really has given a richness to your own personal work as well which makes it stand out about a lot of the stuff that's being produced today which I think is superficial and vain glorious. Yeah. This has a real modesty and integrity That's very nice to hear I mean, and originality i mean it's it comes from huge privilege from just my what my great grandma built and her enthusiasm and forward thinking to keep it all alive and then yeah. just so lucky to be able to be here and do it and just nice to hear that yeah it's yeah yeah but many people many young people would have thought oh what's all this old stuff i want to be cool and contemporary and a big empty space with a black leather sofa yeah. and a big 64 inch <laughs> screen and you know that's cool but this is cool this yeah. is really cool nice this is superb <laughs> wow um okay well let's go upstairs and um oh, look, the bee the bee the bee Jack, your bee thing, just before we go upstairs. Yeah. I love the bee thing so much that I bought. Yeah, so I'm also a beekeeper in the weekends in South London. So yeah, and I've been doing that for 10 years. So that also informs a lot of my work. So a lot of my work's inspired by the colony bees. and the bees and everything I've learned from them. So um, yeah, and that also gives me that connection to nature to be able to, um, yeah, make me feel connected to the natural yeah. world, even in the city. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just it's just superb. Do you gonna sell honey here? Yeah, I've got some honey up there actually. Oh, some old, cool. it's a bit old. Let's have a yeah. look. <laughs> we'll have to have some at the festival. Yeah, I could bring some from South London. Actually, this is quite old, but yeah, that's South London honey. <laughs> Mm, proper honey. Proper honey. Proper honey. All we do is filter it once with a sieve yes. to get rid of wings Without and the, wax. Yeah. And that's I it. know that, can you pop that in the bag? I know that when they have um, been proper, they cook it too much and all yeah. the enzymes are exactly. destroyed. Yeah, pasteurize yeah. it. Oh, how great. Honestly, Jack, you're a star. And there's a watermelon. Yeah, there's a fake watermelon. And but not so godsly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's one of my favourite places I don't places know any young world. artists that know about but not so got to Lee now. Wow. Let me show you this picture. This, oh. This is one of the greatest... Oh, this donkey is lovely. Also, this... Um, this... Leopard here. He's got the greatest face out of any painted <laughs> leopard ever. Yeah. Oh. Look at his lovely face. Oh, he is. He's very heraldic. And he's got good <laughs> spots, too. Good and spots. This is, yeah. this in oh, he's France, such a great... I love Benazza Gottsley. Oh, but yeah, he's just gorgeous. <laughs> he looks like a dog that you'd want. OK, let's go up the steps. OK. Into the museum proper. 
Oh gosh, Jack, it's um, not only is Pollock's Toy Museum my favourite shop in Fitzrovia, and if ever I have to buy a present for someone, I come here, and there never fails to be something to delight, to delight, to delight. Um, but also, it is a museum. Um, it's one of the most enchanting museums in the country. And Jack is standing at the entrance to the museum. And I've always kind of, I've known this since I was a little girl, this place, but I've always wanted to know um, how it came into being. So Jack, you mentioned your grandma started it, so can you tell us why? Uh, so she started it in 1950s and she bought all the stock of Mr Pollock's sh old shop, um, which was in Hoxton, and he'd been trading since 1850. And she bought up all his stock once he'd gone out of business and realised that the toy theatre selling just them alone wouldn't manage to continue. So she set up the toy museum to kind of um, diversify what they were offering. And this was in the 50s where a lot of people were looking back, um, looking forward to the future after the war. So a lot of people were throwing out a lot of old things, Victorian things, and she went around collecting them and preserving them. And she built the collection quite quickly and now there's about 7,000 toys on display and um, yeah it's a kind of homage to looking backwards and remembering kind of the inspiring things from childhood and enjoying things for their how they're made and their materialism and the kind of aesthetic beauty more than maybe an academic museum is it's kind of each case is cur curated in its own kind of unique way and there's a kind of particular emphasis on quite simple means, but with time and dedication, making quite beautiful um, things. So that's a kind of recurring theme. Like here we have like these amazing bread um, toys, which are made just simply of dough, but with time and dedication and a kind of artistic hand, they've been transformed into these beautiful little figures. And um, yeah, there's a... I I mean, they're really like Joseph Cornell boxes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. I used to work in the Guggenheim in Venice, and there were all these little boxes that he'd put together. But actually, I, I like being like Yeah. That. And, and Jack, I think, you know, the thing that's so amazing about this is that, okay, it's a museum looking to the past, but because you are a young artist and you have put all this love and care and creativity that you yourself are doing, it's kind of really, really relevant and really current and your grandma's wisdom and foresight has, has uh, I mean she's created a work of art for you to make a work of art yeah yeah and it feels alive because people come visiting and feel and are constantly inspired by it so we have a lot of art students and illustrators coming so it's Do, kind of yeah. people often drawing and just taking inspiration from the collection so it feels what about the color scheme the red gloss paint color scheme <laughs> is uh, fantastic yeah your grandma's color scheme yeah, yeah. So I mean, she that's was radical. She they was painted very, their walls in red gloss. We have a room upstairs that's painted in black and yellow, which is <gasps> quite intense. Okay, let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's go <laughs> and see it. And the green. I mean, did she do this, Jack? This green and These red. are all the colours of the toy theatre, really. Oh, so God. the toy theatre, they're very gaudily coloured. Yeah. But yeah. oil gloss is something that's pretty unpopular in these days. Uh, these days but. but it's so great. Oh, look at this. The rocking horse room. So yeah, this is painted in oh. black, shiny, high gloss, which... <laughs> it's fantastic. And the frieze. It's just amazing. And all the old games. So when Maybe she started too. the museum, she um, was friends with quite a lot of surrealists in yeah. the 50s, and they donated a lot of the optical toys you see. Um, all these kind of early cinema, the leap from zoeotrope and kind of cartoon to then early cinema. And they were, well, a lot of the surrealists were very interested in this. And yeah, she was donated quite a lot by some quite eccentric. Did you know her? I met her when I was far, four years old. Mm. I remember her. What did she look like? She was quite an elegant looking woman in the photos. I remember her being very old. She was in her 90s and she was very old and I was very little. So Where was she living? Just round the corner on Colville Place. No, she lived there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I mean, what has anyone written a book about her? Uh, I don't think so. She had an obituary in the Independent, but yeah. She wrote a lot of books about children's toys. Did she? she? wrote a book about Chinese What was children. her name? Uh, Marguerite Fordry. 
Marguerite Fordry. F A U D R Y. F A W D R Y. Fordry. Yeah. Okay. Quite an unusual name. Well, someone should write a book about her yeah. because this is, um, if you look at this as an installation, yeah. this is a great artwork. And you know, Kurt Schritters, that German artist who made the Mertz build, you know, just mm -hmm. filled his house with stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of what she did. I mean, really remarkable. And why was she friends with all these artists? Well, I think she was, she worked for the BBC in the 50s, and I think it was quite a, there was lots of kind of radical people around an avant garde scene, so, and. Yeah, okay. she, and when she set up shop, it was quite the scene place to be in Covent Garden. And, yeah. Was it? So, this so it was feels quite, quite a trendy place. It was yeah, trendy it was and trendy and lots of artists. David Bowie used to come. Really? Inspiration. Really? I'll show you a Harlequin later and you'll see that he, oh God, yeah. he definitely got inspiration from the toy theatre characters. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alicia, have you ever seen anything so bad? Incredible. <laughs> People pay to come to the museum, Jack. Yeah, there's a ticket price. How much is the ticket price? Nine pounds for an adult, or four fifty for a child. Yeah, These are some of my toys that I played with as a child, <laughs> and Woody and Buzz. Oh. Because I wanted there to be something nostalgic for each generation. So although a lot of the toys here are Victorian, so most people can't remember that. Yeah. So I wanted a few. I mean, the problem with modern toys is they're often very ugly, but Woody and Buzz are classic. And in Toy Story 2, the story is, is that an evil museum collector is wanting to put them in a case forever <laughs> and no one would play with them anymore. So what I did with them is when I bought them, I took them downstairs and I told them that they were free to go if they wanted and I left the door slightly ajar. And I left them there for one evening and when I came back they were both still there. Oh, so Jack. I gave them a chance, but also I've given them a screwdriver. Just in case Jack. they want to try oh, and get Jack, out. that's so wonderful, <laughs> Jack. That's so wonderful. Oh, you are so kind and thoughtful. <laughs> oh, Jack, it's, that's just marvelous. I, I mean, I think that is a great work of art. I think that's amazing. It's so lovely. And then these are... These are actually from... I was born in 1990, but these are from the 80s, but my mum had bought them in a charity shop for me. So... They are nostalgic for me, but also nostalgic for anyone that's... And, they get, and you've put them in there, Jack? They're in there, yeah, I've put them in there. You made them look gorgeous. Yeah. Really brilliant. Hey, man. And it's another got amazing red room. Pack. So this room, this room is the... We've got puppets in here, and then we've got a lot of tin toys made in England. And, um, and then in here we've got a wax work of Mr. Green, who used to make toy theatres. Um, yeah. Where is he? He's in here, actually. He's in here. Yeah. So, <laughs> and... God, so it really, Toy Story must have so much resonance to you and a night in the museum and all those yeah. things. It must be... <laughs> and the cutouts. Do you, who looks after it, Jack? You? Yeah, so me and Emily, me and Emily, my girlfriend, we're, we're kind of custodians at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, trustees from the charity who come and volunteer time and they help Do they? Cura curatorial things. Um, but it's a pretty small team. Yeah, uh, it really is, because it's a really magnificent museum. And what I love about it is the lack of bureaucracy, the constant creativity, the humanity, yeah. and the lack of pretentiousness and the lack of jargon. It's just so... Truly how a museum should be, I think. So as we go up these steps, this is actually taking us through to the next door building. So the building we've been in now was built in 1880. But then as we step up here, my great grandma knocked through. And this the building we're going to now was built in 1760. So it's much older, it's a Georgian townhouse. So you'll notice as we go through, it kind of becomes smaller and creakier. Oh my God, look how low the ceiling is. So, so this is 1760. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty old, and one of the old mm. kind of in the area, it's pretty kind of original um, example yes, of one of these houses. Yes, anything to it. And then in this room, actually, we have some interesting toys. We have this Egyptian mouse, which was donated by an Egyptologist to my great grandma, and um, it's four thousand years old, and by a long shot, the the um, oldest toy in, that we have on display. <laughs> but it's just so great. And then these two down here. Oh, hello. These two um, 
It's pretty creepy, and if you don't like dolls, which just half the people that visit do get a bit creeped out, but these two are incredibly old. They were made in 1825, and the story goes is that they travelled across the Rocky Mountains in a wagon at the time of the Wild West, and then they were shipped back to the UK as gifts, but they've travelled kind of, um, yeah, a long way in their long life. You can see this one's... Yeah, um, she's got wrinkles. She's got wrinkles from She's it. got wrinkles. So. She's obviously had Botox. <laughs> <laughs> and then actually this view here is one of my favourites because you get this... Hey, lovely... Kat! Yeah. Don't you think that's a Native American bead necklace that she's wearing? That would have been, that, those tiny beads were what the Native Americans had. And it looks to me like it's on a leather thong, maybe not. But that's definitely um, yeah, you're right. Native American beadwork. So if it was the time of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that would have come from the... Wow, okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like a kind of... No, no, that's London definitely... Victorian um, look, does it? American and they made those beautiful beaded moccasins too. Mm. Yeah, but that that tiny tiny bead was so incredible. Oh this view back here is also one of my favourites because you get this oh look at that. Very unusual to have a this knock through, but then also you have this kind of stairway leading up to the inside of the case with the toy theatres in it. So you've got this worlds within worlds kind of yeah. amazing depth there. And the and the yeah, colour, God. yeah. So, so amazing. <laughs> and the wooden dolls, which I've always loved. The Russian wooden dolls. And bears! Have you counted how many bears are in this museum? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll take you around here and we'll meet the famous bear we have. Okay, famous bear. So, this is... Oh. We have here Eric. And he's oh Eric. He's 116 years old. Oh, and he's one of the world's oldest teddy bears. Oh Eric. So the f uh, there's debate about when the first teddy bear came out, and I think there might be one slightly older than him, but he's pretty much up there as one oh. of the oldest. So oh, do you love him? Love him, yeah, of course. Eric. <laughs> we have to make sure the moths don't Eric. eat him. Eric, oh, you are so lovely. <laughs> And they're on these lovely, um, I didn't create oh. this case, but it's been like this since I can remember. They're on their, they're on their nice sticks. Hey, do you have a koala bear? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe he is? No, no, I don't think we do. Because I had, in Australia, we didn't have bears, we had koala bears. Of course, yeah. I have to give you one. And then I made this wallpaper as well. Oh, Jack, oh my God. <laughs> it's fantastic. <sighs> Love it, love it. Um, oh, this and all houses. Who's he? He looks very plush. Yeah, not sure. I don't know much about him. Made by Chad Bally. He looks like a ticket inspector. He's a bus conductor. <laughs> my... And the cases. Did your grandma make all these? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a kind of slow yeah. curation of yeah. lots of them. Yeah. But um, one thing I'm very noticing is it's very dust free. Who dusts it? Yeah, we can do. Yeah, we do a lot of dusting. Yeah. Yeah, but presumably in the cases we don't have to because a lot of them are sealed. Some of them do mm. get dustier than others. Mm. But London, South Central London is particularly filthy. I know, filthy, I so. know, I know. That's why I was thinking. But we've got these two in here are some of my favourites. We've got this wishbone furniture at the back there, mm. which is made of chicken's wishbones. Mm. Oh, As a wow. vegetarian, it kind of freaks me out, but also I quite like the recycling yeah, of that. Yep, yep. I've used everything, <laughs> if you're going to kill it. And then that one, which is better for a vegetarian, is a furniture made of apple pips. Thousands of apple pips. Oh, wow. And again, yeah, the cases are so lovely because they're so oh. beautiful backing. And, and then, da, look, a little French bulldog for you. Da has a French bulldog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, he's doing a lecture for those cats, <laughs> telling them about it. Did you do that? <laughs> what? Did you arrange no, that? No, I don't know who did that. It's lovely. Yeah. Oh, it's just this... so charming and well, it's just so lovely that the, the kind of way everybody's speaking to each other and everything. Oh. Little girls don't have dolls, however, what do they? I'm not sure, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure how much children really play much anymore. Yeah. It's sweet. 
This yeah. section's one of my favourites because it's the folk toys, which yep. I just love. And my great grandma travelled around Eastern Europe a lot, and um, these two are real favourites of mine. Again, kind of simple means. This is just sugar paper, but cut cut out beautifully and delicately and carefully to make this beautiful form. So you are know, they Polish paper cuts? Yeah, yeah. Polish. And again, so this would cost hardly anything to make, just like the bread figures and the other things, but just through dedication and artistry, they've created something incredibly beautiful. And I like his funny face. I love. Very characterful. I love, I love. <laughs> he looks very proud. I'm obsessed with little wooden toys. This is your section then. Yeah, no, I'm obsessed <laughs> with toys. When I was quite old, I had like cabinets with tiny little things and I still do it. Well, you know, I bought from you the other day, all those little <laughs> tiny things. You have to come and say hello to them. This is the doll's room, which again, slightly divides opinion if you don't like Victorian dolls. Lots of people find their eyes a bit creepy. Oh. But they're just lovely. And some highlights in here are like the pearly kings and queens, where we have a nice connection with them because they're very London centric. And um, again, their clothes are just beautifully kind of decorated through time, but not actually very expensive. But actually, the end product is very, very beautiful. And then we have this lovely um, French autonoma baby in a cabbage. And you walk. <laughs> You wind her up, and then she pops up and down. Oh, Jack, I want that. I want that. That is so cool. Yeah. Does she still work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, God, how brilliant. Can you make one, a modern one? I do have some friends in Scotland who make autonomy, but they're quite complicated. Mm. It's yeah. kind of very technical clockwork that goes on inside them. So. Oh, she's so enchanting. But I wouldn't be able to make one. And a paper mache. And a nice paper mache cabbage. What more could you want? Nothing more, nothing <laughs> more. I love the sound of this museum too, Jack, the sort of as we're walking around the wood. Yeah. Just kind of creeping and creaking. Well, this room definitely would have seen a lot of um, life in it because we've got the stove there and this is where people would have... This yeah. was actually lodgings for yeah. 200 years and people lived in here. So there's a lot of, yeah. you know, when the building creaks, so you do feel... And that low, I mean, the ceiling's low because people were smaller, weren't they? People were smaller and the building te like and kept the technology walls. was um, mm. not as advanced as well. Mm. Yeah. No, it's just superb. You really do get that. And imagine also there would have been candles and yeah, you know, it's incredible the kind of fire thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It what is this just interesting more? Uh, well, these are mainly West African toys, but then that one actually is made by an artist in London. Yeah, I thought so. That we had an exhibition with, and she. Um, oh really? So you're doing um, exhibitions? We did one just before Covid yeah. to test out how it worked and it worked quite well. I mean there is a reason why galleries... I think that's a great idea, yeah. Galleries tend to be white walled, don't they? But the museum, you have to compete with quite a lot if you're going to have a show in here. But mm -hmm. And need... this would have been very topical last week. Football, yeah. Football, if we'd done it. And yeah. I'm obsessed with these. I didn't know. Yeah, these were donated by my little brother, actually. It's a fan yeah. Lego. And, um, I didn't know about them, like, because I missed the right, Lego thing. Yeah. And then I saw one in an antique shop, or like a junk shop. And I thought it was amazing. Yeah, well, they're voted the best toy um, ever. And also, some, really? someone told me that Lego people outnumber real people now. Really? <laughs> I don't know if it's true. That's a great statistic. <laughs> Let's hope they don't. That is a on. great... <laughs> Wow, that's so sweet. And you've got, oh God. And some Pokemon cards down here. These belong to me, including Charizard, which is one of the rarest. Wow. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and then this last room is the toy theater room. So this is what we're famous for. And um, yeah, this room has the might have some harlequins in where you can see that David Bowie would have been um, inspired by the kind of costume of these uh, kind of 18th century theatrical. So how old was David Bowie when he came here? 
He probably was he not famous? No, so he wasn't famous. No, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so a young boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very cool that he sorted out. You know that he found that this yeah. place existed. And who printed the curtains? Yeah, I don't know where they came from, but they've been here for quite a while. And then down here, you got this picture of yeah, this is Grimaldi down here, and Grimaldi was one of the most famous clowns. So clown was often kind of involved in the shows. But we found out recently that this building was lodgings and Grimaldi had a son and Grimaldi's son was actually an alcoholic because he'd injured his leg as a child and he was in excruciating pain. And he became a clown as well. He never lived up to his father's reputation. So he was a kind of failed clown and uh, he died very young, but it turns out he died in this building. But it's just a coincidence that we his father is kind of adorning the well, walls. Did he outlive Grimaldi the first? He, he, I'm not sure when he died in, to, compared to his dad, but he, yeah. he he died in here and then he had his wake in the pub, in the Hope pub. No. Yeah. So he so, might have died in this room, maybe? Yeah. And now, and but and his dad is kind of adorning the walls, which is quite yeah. incredible. The history of <laughs> London and, and yeah. this area is quite extraordinary, isn't it? You mm -hmm. know, just so. And of course, theatres, um, this is a really relevant room now, or has been for the last 18 months when real theatres were closed down. Yeah. Did you find that lots of people were coming and buying model theatres so they could build their own? Yeah, well, we, uh, unfortunately, our, well, our website has only just been up and running, but we would have had a captive audience. You really would have, people, like, build people. your own theatre. Yeah. Don't wait for lockdown to end. Exactly, oh. yeah. So. It's just superb. <laughs> Did you ever have a toy theatre when you were little? I used to make them, yeah. I'm not very keen on performing, even though I have done. But I used to make them, yeah. Good. I enjoy the colouring in and the, and the kind of constructing of them, which is the nice thing about them, because there's something, you know, for everyone. You Did know. you make any of these? Uh, Are these are like, historical prototypes. They're all historical, yeah, yeah, these ones. But I love your one downstairs. I think yeah. that's my favourite of all, actually, the one that you made. Oh, wow. And then this last section here is of Chinese on this side and Japanese on the other. And my great grandma was very keen. She was very left wing. And so when um, Mao Zedong took power, she was very interested in China. And she became very keen on Chinese childhood and understanding it. She wrote a book about Chinese childhood. And she actually encouraged my dad and uh, brother when they were young in the 70s to learn Chinese because she said it would be very important for you to learn this. Wow, so what was, a visionary. So she knew. She knew that China... Because China was, is the future. Yeah, so... Isn't it, girl? <laughs> <laughs> so this is quite, yeah, interesting kind of section. Um, How prescient of her. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I would have loved to have known her. Yeah, I think yeah. it's definitely quite a... But she'd be so person. proud of you. Yeah, let's hope so. It'd be nice. This is really extraordinary. It's not often when one is surrounded by such fascinating things that one looks at the floor, but this floor, even the floor is remarkable. What have you done? It's just got such an incredible passion up. Yeah, not me, but my dad has regularly puts varnish down on it, so it's got this, looks like it's kind of shiny wet. But it's just, it's just superb. Unusual. It's superb. <laughs> okay. Hello. No, who's Sugar? This is Rebecca. This is uh, Jack's cousin. Hello, we have to fit. Okay, we'll meet Sugar. Can we film Sugar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sugar. Hello. Hi. So, Sugar, this is so nice to meet you. And you're Jack's cousin? Yeah. God, how cool having a cousin that owns a toy shop. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think I'd like you to be my cousin, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drawing? Um, I'm writing things down. Oh. Homie names, actually. Potential pony names. Pa are you, you're not getting a real pony? Maybe. What? Maybe. Are you going to have him here in Fitzrovia? <laughs> I live in Scotland. Oh, so that's, yeah, Jack was saying, that's where his family comes from. Um, near Edinburgh? Kelso. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. My family comes from there too. Well, I hope you get him. <laughs> See you later.
Um, Jack, it's just thank you so much for that tour. And um, I really, you know, I can't express my admiration um, for what you are creating here because you're not just preserving, you're creating something here. Um, not just in the museum and making it so charming and funny with your interventions, but also what you're creating downstairs with your own work, beautiful etchings. And um, I hope um, that lots, you know, this series of Fitzrovian of which you are the first. Um, I hope that you know people will come now and see the real thing now that you're out of lockdown. Yeah. And you're open six days a week? Yeah, we're open six days a week, Monday to Saturday. And you can go on our website to book a ticket or you can turn up and just get one on the door. And the website's pollockstoymuseum.co.uk. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.